students hello and welcome to the show today we will discuss one more topic related to the plants that is the pollination pollination as we know is a very important process because it leads to the formation of new seeds that grow into new plants this process begins in the flower itself as we know that plants have flowers or cones that are important for reproduction flowers possess male parts called as stamens that produce pollen in their anthers the pollen grains contain the male gametes the flowers also have a female part called as pistil the top of the pistil is called the stigma which is often sticky the basal swollen part of the pistil known as ovary possesses the female gametes inside the ovules which after fertilization develop into seeds for seed formation to occur pollen must move from a stamen to the stigma the transfer occurs between cones in pine trees and other gymnosperms the process of transfer of pollen from stamen or anther to the stigma is called as pollination based on the destination of pollen grains we find two types of pollination one self pollination and second the cross pollination Let us first talk about self pollination. It occurs only not in the bisexual flowers but also in unisexual flowers on the same plant. Whether the pollen are transferred from an anther to the stigma of the same flower or a genetically similar flower, self pollination is of two types. One, the autogamy in which the pollen grains are transferred from anther to the stigma of the same flower and second is the gytonogamy in which the pollen grains are transferred from anther to the stigma of different flower but on the same plant as we can see in triticum estivum that is the wheat Flower mechanisms that favor self pollination are the homogamy. Here, the male and female organs, that is, the stamens and carpels, mature at the same time. Another type of self pollination is the cleistogamy. Here, the bisexual flowers never open; therefore, the pollen grains pollinate only the stigma of the same flower. for example in aratus hypogea that is the ground nut the self pollination has certain advantages like in self pollination the purity of the generation is maintained pollen grains are not wasted and it ensures the seed production but at the same time it has certain disadvantages as it lacks variation new and healthier varieties are thus not formed it also results in weaker progeny producing weaker seeds and thus the weaker plants the second type of pollination is the cross pollination when the pollen grains are transferred from anther of one plant to the stigma of flower on a different plant it is called as cross pollination also known as allogamy flower mechanisms that favor cross pollination are number 1 self sterility or incompatibility due to some physiological and genetic reasons the pollen fails to germinate on its own stigma this is called as self sterility it can be seen in many species like malva petunia solanum nicotiana etc another is the dicogamy 
This refers to the maturation of male and female sex organs at different times. When anthers mature first, it is called as protoandry, as we can see in Saxifraga. When gynoecium or pistil matures first, it is called as protogyny, as seen in magnolia and plantago. One more mechanism favoring the cross pollination is hercogamy. In some bisexual flowers, the structure of the male and female sex organs itself proves a barrier to self pollination. For example, in Gloriosa, the anthers dehyce at a distance so that the stigma is out of reach of its own pollen. And in orchids, the pollen remain aggregated together in the form of pollinia. Yet another type of floral mechanism adapted by the plants to prefer cross-pollination is the heterostyle. In plants we show this mechanism, the flowers may be of two or more types or morphs with regard to mainly the length of the style and the length of the stamens. Pollen from a flower can bring about effective pollination in flowers of a different type and not within its own type. The best example of heterostyle is presented by the prime rose which is Primula vulgaris. It shows dicetyle that is has two types of flowers. One the pin eyed or long styled with long styles and short stamens and second the thrumb eyed or short styled with short style and long stamens. As a rule, pollen from thrumb eyed flowers can bring about effective pollination only in pin eyed flowers and similarly pollen from pin eyed flowers can effect legitimate pollination only in thrumb eyed flowers but not in their own type. One more floral mechanism is the dicline, which means the formation of unisexual flowers. The diclinus plant may be monoecious or dioecious. In monoecious plants, the two sexes are located in the same plant, for example, cucurbita, and in dioecious plants, the two sexes are present on two plants. For example, in Carica. And this cross pollination has certain advantages over the self pollination. Plants prefer cross pollination over self pollination. Since two different plants are involved in this process and two sets of parental characters are mixed, it results in a better offspring. As a result, seeds are viable, good, healthy and thus offsprings are resistant to disease, pests and drought. They grow vigorously under different agronomical conditions. As we saw in self-pollination, cross-pollination also has some disadvantages as the external agency is involved. There always is a chance factor. Large amount of pollen grains are wasted in this way. We know that sexual reproduction in animals is brought about by the active participation of the male and female individuals. Impelled by the urge to mate, the males and females walk, crawl, swim or fly to reach their respective counterparts. But there is no such mechanism in plants. The male flowers or male organs have no internal device to reach the female organs in another flower. For this, they are dependent on some external agency which mostly transfers pollen grains from the male parent to the stigma in the female parent. These are known as pollinating agencies. Depending upon the nature of the pollinating agency, Pollination is again of various types. One is the anemophily. 
it's a simple form of pollination here the transfer of pollen grains to the stigma takes place through wind it's an abiotic means of pollination and being non directional a wasteful process that the pollen would reach the right stigma through wind is a hit or miss affair during the transit of pollen through wind a considerable amount of pollen is lost because it never reaches a proper stigma in order to stand this loss anemophilous plants have to produce enormous quantities of pollen characteristic of anemophilous flowers are the flowers are small and inconspicuous non essential parts are either absent or reduced the flowers are colorless odorless and nectarless in case of unisexual flowers the male flowers are more abundant and in bisexual flowers the stamens are generally numerous flowers are produced above the foliage before the appearance of new foliage or placed in hanging position both the stigmas and anthers are exerted anthers are usually versatile pollen grains in anemophilous flowers are light small and dusty so that they can be blown to longer distances sometimes up to 1300 kilometers stigma in the anemophilous flowers is hairy feathery or branched to catch the wind borne pollen grains examples of anemophilous plants are amaranthus cannabis and morus another type of pollination is the entomophily in this type of pollination insects are the chief pollinators which show various types of intimate relationship with the flowers they visit the characteristics of entomophilus flowers are that they are brightly colored as we can see in viola the small flowers become conspicuous by their grouping into large inflorescences as we can see in the capitulum of helianthus that is the sunflower flowers where the petals are not conspicuous other parts become showy for example the bracts in bougainvillea and leaves in euphorbia certain entomophilus flowers produce nectar secreting glands called nectaries specific nectar collecting insects enter into the flower and thus carry the pollen grains from one flower to another nectar is an important food for insects sometimes this nectar is contained in a special structure called spur as we can see in impatiens balsamina the garden balsam most insect pollinated flowers have a landing platform in many cases special markings occur on the petals for guiding the insect to nectar glands they are called honey or nectar guides as we can see in viola even edible pollen are produced by some entomophilus plants as in rosa clematis and magnolia smell or odor is an important adaptation of nocturnal entomophilus flowers which bloom and emit smell at night to attract insects when the color of the flower has no role for attraction as in sestrum the night queen and jasminum which is the jasmine pollen grains in insect pollinated flowers are produced in small numbers in comparison to the wind pollinated flowers their pollen grains are sticky and rough so that they are held on legs or wings of insects in callotropis which is the entomophilus plant pollen grains occur in groups called pollinia many entomophilus flowers possess a sticky stigma salvias show a specialized turnpike floral mechanism for bee pollination the flowers of salvia have a bilipped corolla and the two stamens are attached to the corolla tube only one half of each anther is fertile 
the sterile halves of both the anthers jointly form a sterile plate of tissue which is placed above the lower lip at the mouth of the flower. The fertile halves become separated from the plate due to the elongation of the connective. They are situated under the hood of the upper lip of the corolla. As the bee lands on the upper lip and tries to extract nectar, it pushes against the sterile plate which automatically brings down the fertile anthers to touch its back depositing pollen thereon. In flowers whose anthers have already discharged their pollen contents, the stigma hangs down. When a pollen laden bee visits such a flower, its back rubs against the stigma and thus pollination is brought about. Another type of pollination based on the pollinating agency is the hydrophily. It is the transfer of pollen grains with the help of water. This type of pollination mostly occurs in aquatic plants at the surface water or inside water. The pollen grains are carried by water and when they reach the stigma, they coil around it and germinate. The hydrophilus flowers are usually small and inconspicuous. Nectar and odor are absent in water pollinated flowers. Stigma is long, sticky but unwettable. Hydrophily is of two types. One, hypohydrophily which includes plants which are pollinated inside the water as in ceratophyllum and zostera. And second is the epihydrophily which includes plants which are pollinated on the surface of water as we can see in Valisneria. Another pollination type is the ornithophily. It is the transfer of pollen grains with the help of birds. In some parts of the tropics, birds are more important pollinators than insects. Small birds with long pointed beak suck nectar from flowers and bring about the pollination. Ornithophilus flowers are usually tubular, cup shaped or urn shaped and brightly colored with large quantities of pollen and plenty of nectar. Hummingbirds, sunbirds and honey eaters are some of the birds which regularly visit flowers. Nicotiana and Calistemon are the common examples of ornithophilus plants. One more type of pollination can be seen in plants that is known as chiropterophily, which is the pollination that occurs with the help of bats. Bats are instrumental pollinators only in the tropics. Chiropterophilus flowers are born singly or in clusters quite away from the branches and foliage owing to their long stalks. These flowers open only at or after dusk. They are dull in color and emit strong odors. Chiropterophily is usually found in Kaijalia. Dear viewers, in in addition to these commonly occurring pollination types through various pollinating agencies, there are also some other less commonly occurring types of pollination like malcophily in which the aids of pollination are the snails and second is the ophiophily in which the pollination takes place with the help of snakes. And the third type is the myrmecophily, in which the process of pollination is brought about by the ants. With this, we come to the conclusion of today's lecture, in which we discussed the pollination and its types. In addition, we also discussed the various pollinating agencies that help the plants in bringing about the process of pollination and carrying on their future generations. 
with this i thank you all for watching this lecture goodbye